Greetings and salutations friends and welcome back to more Warhammer 40k lore, where today we are going to be talking about Space Hulks. They have been a big part of 40k long before 40k was even properly 40k, yes indeed. We have to go all the way back to the Rogue Trader era to find the first installment of the Space Hulk board game, released in 1989 with more than a pinch of inspiration from a recently released Aliens franchise. That means that it came out a full four years before for 2nd edition 40k, when 40k first became 40k, and almost a decade before the 3rd edition where the universe really found its footing. In relations to its lore, its style, and its grimdark appeal that would propel it yet further into fame and glory in our current age. For those of you not uh, cursed with quite such a long memory, Rogue Trader and 2nd Edition 40k were very different beasts to the 40k that we know and love today. Indeed, the very first iteration of Rogue Trader, and one of the first installments called Space Crusade, were by and large intended to be sci-fi versions of Games Workshop's then wildly popular Warhammer Fantasy franchise. Yeah, we have come quite a ways from those days, have we not? But let's move on from the historical portion of the video and into the actual lore, what you're all here for. The term Space Hulk is a very broad and rough term, meant to describe a conglomeration of spaceships of all kinds of various shapes, sizes, and origins that have been merged together within the tides of the Immaterium and then spat out into reality, often with brand new and interesting occupants. But Arch, I hear you say, that doesn't give me an awful lot to go on, and well, yep, yeah, that's entirely correct. The definition of Space Hulk is so unbelievably broad because no two are ever even remotely the same, or hell, even similar half the time. The whole conglomeration of spaceships, yeah, that's the biggest ingredient. A Space Hulk could consist theoretically from anything between two all the way up to a couple dozen spaceships, all of various sizes, purposes, and even, in many cases, origins. It would not be at all unusual to see a sleek, smooth, craft world constructed Eldar Raider smashed together with a massive, bulky Imperial warship whose bridge has been replaced entirely by an Orc Kill Cruiser, a collection of scrap parts, buckets, and gaffer tape, even at the best of times. Add to that the bewildering array of different marks, versions, and purposes of spaceships within the Imperium alone, and you have a nigh infinite potential for busted, broken, and twisted abominations of the spacefaring variety. As to the precise process of the creation of these agglomerations of space junk, it is actually quite remarkably simple. The various component parts simply just crash into one another. <laughs> Yes, much like a petulant child with a blowtorch and too many army men, the horrors that are the Space Hulks are created when the whims of the immaterial gods send one ship slamming into another. And as the two freshly wrought wrecks continue their journey through the warp, the reality-twisting powers of that unholy house of horrors start blending the two ships together, fusing and combining them with solid metal running molten and bonding with quite literally any material regardless of the feasibility of the process. Eldar Wraithbone can bond with Tyranid biomass even as the void shield steel of a sword class frigate mixes right in alongside it. And this is not some merely incidental or surface level intermingling. The two vessels coalesce to such a degree as to be almost stronger than they originally were one by one. If not, a Space Hulk would be rather easy to shear apart simply by focusing fire on the various intersections between vessels. But sadly for the Imperium and anyone else that is cursed with the presence of one of these monsters, it's not quite that easy. As a point of fact, the very reason why Space Hulks are so ludicrously dangerous and difficult to deal with is because it's virtually impossible to destroy the damned things. It's hard enough to kill a spaceship, never mind 12 all huddled together in an amorphous blob. 
Even if you were to be able to locate and destroy one of the main plasma generators, well, congratulations, you've destroyed one out of twelve ships. Now get to work on the other eleven. And all of this, once again, of course, is predicated on the possibility of actually discovering things to shoot at. Space hulks that are made up of several different patterns and indeed again origins of vessels might give off a bewildering array of signals and radiation, all confusing the ever-living shit out of even the most advanced of augers. Hey, over here appears to be a battleship. Oh, there's a frigate over there. That's a cruiser. I don't even know what this is, but it's borking at me, so I don't like that. Is that an engine or is that a gun port? Is that a sensory array or merely an artistic interpretation of a toilet? Not to mention figuring out what's actually doing what in this massive blob of metal and ships. What's targeting me? Is it the torpedoes mounted in the nose of that orc ship? Or is it the lance batteries over in that imperial ships? Or is it some kind of esoterical Eldar bullshit cannonade down from that Eldar doodad hung beneath the Space Hulk? And how do I even begin to immobilize this bloody thing? <laughs> it's got 12 separate engine arrays! <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's a bit of a bastard fighting a space hawk. Which is precisely why so many hostile entities often decide to make them their homes as well. Everything from gene stealers to chaos space marines to renegades. There was even an Adeptus Mechanicus experiment to turn a small planet into an improvised space hulk, up arm it, shove a bunch of guns on it, and then use it in the service of the Imperium. This experiment, like many Adeptus Mechanicus experiments in weaponry, didn't turn out particularly well. You know, I'm all starting to think that there is something with that whole Omnisire thing, because every time the Mechanicus seem to try to actively invent something new, it does tend to go down the shitter, doesn't it? Mark my word, we'll see Primaris Marines going that very way within a couple of years. But that is a topic for some other day. Now, as to the actual operational threat of a Space Hulk, it varies from zero to infinite, essentially. Yet another problem with that whole classification thing. For as ludicrously dangerous as Space Hulks can be, it can also be harmless. It can simply just be a bunch of spaceships twisted together and spat out of the warp, devoid of any and all occupants. In which case, the Space Hulk is essentially nothing more than a ginormous treasure chest dumped onto the porch of whatever Imperial planetary governor is nearby. Due again to the very nature of Space Hulks being a, you know, blushing together of dozens of different types of ships, there can be all kinds of interesting stuff aboard those vessels. Long lost weapons caches, STC patterns, technology, even fully functional working examples of Archaeotech, and, of course, the good old fashioned tonnage price of billions upon billions of tons of manufactured steel and electronical equipment, augurous ways, weapon systems, etc, etc. There have been examples of entire planetary systems being massively economically revitalized by the arrival of a space hulk, providing of course access to countless man-hours worth of labor, valuables and wealth that can be extracted from the behemoth of the warp, not to mention additional attention from nearby imperial systems. The arrival of a quiescent space hulk could turn a backwater place into an absolute thrumming hub of activity. As the Adeptus Terra, the Administratum, the Ministorum, the Minotaurum, the Inquisition, the Mechanicus, everyone wants a piece of a Space Hulk. But, <laughs> and this is a big old bubbly but, Space Hulks are not always unoccupied. In fact, it is fairly rare for these ginormous things to not have picked up the occasional freeloader over the course of its travels through the warp and real space. A lovely example of this would be the Hulk designated Alveus Alpha Alpha Sextus by one Hermann von Straub, the overlord of Armageddon. He deemed the Space Hulk to be uninhabited, harmless, and even began issuing out licenses to local companies to begin salvaging operations. I have made an entire large lore video series, which means custom graphics and custom made art, detailing what was about to happen afterwards, and it's titled The War for Armageddon. 
I'm sure that will already clue you in on just how unoccupied that particular Space Hulk was. By the way, its residents at the time had a different name for it. The Imperials might have called it Alveus Alpha Alpha Sextus, but the populace aboard called it World Killer. Yes. And this, by the way, would be the second time that Armageddon was visited by a space hulk with less than hospitable intent. And so let's diverge for a moment away from the space hulk and its nuts and bolts in and of itself and instead talk about its many, 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 many different brands of squatters. First and foremost, why is a Space Hulk such a popular place for the dispossessed? Well, it's massive, it's very difficult to destroy, it's very difficult to detect whoever is on board the damn thing without actually getting on board it yourself due to all of the various interference and signals I mentioned earlier, and best of all, if you can kickstart the motherfucker, it is essentially a star fortress ready made and fully armed. A glittering example of this very thing put into practice would of course be the Broken Back, the Space Hulk occupied by the remnants of the Soul Drinkers chapter of the Adeptus Astartes. You see, the Soul Drinkers had gone through a bit of a tumultuous period of um, internal disagreements and disputes, when one of their librarians, Sarpedon, returned to the chapter after having committed some... Uh, how do I put it, um, expedient actions, shall we say, for which he was condemned. Then engaged in a honour duel with his chapter master to determine whether or not he was guilty of the accusations or not, Sarpedon sprouted massive spider legs from his abdomen and went on to kill his chapter master. Then, in an act of truly intrepid and imaginary interpretation, Sarpedon went on to declare his mutation a gift from the Emperor, and declared that the Soul Drinkers chapter and the Soul Drinkers alone were specially picked out by the God Emperor himself and granted his blessings, which took many fold forms like ginormous malformed claw arms, or spider legs, or horns, you know, the usual. Big E even went so far as to send the chapter Visions of a Space Hulk, which the chapter then cleansed of its gene stealer infestation, occupied as their new base of operation. They outfitted it with both void shields, lance batteries, and bombardment platforms, and turned it into a weapon capable of resisting entire fleets of Imperial vessels. Of course, in the case of the Soul Drinkers, it eventually turned out that, uh, no, Big E was actually not speaking to them directly, and they were being used and abused by a demon of Zinch, but yeah, that is neither here nor there, of course. The point is that the worshippers of Chaos, wittingly or not, do have a habit of turning Space Hulks into improvised battle stations. Another one would of course be the Devourer of Stars, which was for a time being the personal flagship of Angron himself. Man, that must have been a very, very angry piece of rock. Ooh. <laughs> Another example of an almost as butthurt mineral deposit would of course be World Killer, the space hulk of Gazgul Mag Uruk Thraka during the invasion of Armageddon, or the Iron Worm, another orc infested space hulk that was tormenting Segmentum Tempestus for quite a while until suddenly and inexplicably going missing. <laughs> Which, incidentally, also coincided with a rise in Necron activity in the local area. Something tells me the Orky Borkies pulled the lever they really, really shouldn't have. The Orcs, of course, favour Space Hulks because, well, they're very large, they're not very aesthetically pleasing, which is a massive plus for Orcs, and they are huge! Yes, I'm going to mention large as a plus twice because there are a lot of orcs, and they don't really care over much about stuff like you know, living quarters and conveniences or hell, even void proofing half the time. Even the absence of geller fields, you know, the things that keep the demons on the outside of the ship during warp travel, that isn't too big of a bother for the orcs. In fact, they simply just view the 
lack of Gellerfields, or at the very least the presence of occasionally firing Gellerfields, heavyweight on the occasional part there, as merely a form of in-flight entertainment, as various warp entities will undoubtedly keep spawning throughout the ship and then be brutalized by the orc populace, who will find all of this deeply, deeply amusing. Another advantageous fact of the sheer size of a space hulk is that it requires tremendous amounts of energy to move. The sheer scope and scale of one means that it reacts somewhat poorly to local gravitational pulls, and you are going to need some frighteningly large engines to move it with any kind of, you know, purpose. And the orcs are very, very very fond of anything that is grossly out of proportion to its actual energy output. And so we have engines almost the size of ships bolted onto other ships, also of course with their engines flaring. What's that? You don't know which direction the engines are facing, you say? And so you have a dozen engines flaring all across the Space Hulk, pushing it in different directions? Well, that's only an excuse to put even more engines on the back of the Space Hulk. <laughs> oh, you gotta love the Orkies sometimes, you really do. But, of course, we cannot talk about Space Hulks without mentioning their most famous and uh, iconic inhabitants. Namely, of course, the Gene Stealers. Indeed, there were Gene Stealers aboard Space Hulks before we even knew what the fuck Tyranids were. Indeed, the origins of the Gene Stealers go all the way back, as mentioned, to the Rogue Trader era and the Space Hulks of that period, at which point they were described as enigmatic monsters from one of the moons of Imgar that were spreading through the galaxy and turning into a real headache for the Imperium, and, <laughs> well, I mean, yes, they, they certainly did turn out to be a bit um, more of a problem than initially anticipated. These days, of course, the fluff has been somewhat twisted around, and now it's stated that no, 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 they were always actually Tyranids, it's just that the Imperium didn't know of the extent of the problem, and therefore assumed them to simply be from one of the moons of Imgarl. Whether or not that is simply a case of good old-fashioned retconning or GW's foresight, well, that is certainly open to some interpretation. But regardless, it is absolutely a fact that the Gene Stealers were some of the very first occupants that we encountered aboard a Space Hulk. And it certainly does make a great deal of sense for the scouting organism of the Tyranid Hive fleets to chill out aboard a Space Hulk. Because it's very difficult to detect the little bastards. The only way you can really find out that they are there is by boarding the Space Hulk in question. And considering the Gene Stealers essentially make a living by ambushing people who come into their hidey holes and infecting them with their gender bender sex organs, <laughs> well, that's, um, that's pretty, that's pretty perfect as far as the Gene Stealers are concerned. Now, of course, the Space Hulks aren't perfect because they don't actually, you know, they, they don't operate like a ship, normally speaking. There are those factions and races within the Imperium and beyond that have taken to utilizing Space Hulks in a more proactive fashion, attaching engines to them, attaching um, warp cable engines to them along with Geller fields and so on to allow them to travel through the warp to specific destinations and through real space as well under directed propulsion. But without these measures, a Space Hulk will simply just wander around real space for a while and then get sucked into the Immaterium again for no really apparent reason, only to be spat out once more somewhere else in the galaxy. Sometimes this happens entirely accidentally and randomly with no discernible patterns, other times it may appear as if a malicious intelligence is behind it all. One perfect example of that, which this will be a little bit of a teaser for Badab, would be the Space Hulk the Unhallowed Heart, which caused no end of problems for the Warder's Space Marine chapters, tasked with the protection of the Maelstrom Resource Extraction Grid. And the Unhallowed Heart was a very strange entity in many ways. First and foremost, it seems to have slipped directly out of the Maelstrom, a very large but stable warp storm. 
Now, of course, a warp storm is um, an area of space where the immaterial and the material universe overlaps in a way, where reality is not quite real. Nevertheless, the appearance of a space hulk coming directly out from such an area rather than a warp rift is unusual. And in addition to that, the problem with the Unhallowed Heart wasn't that it was occupied by gene stealers or orcs or chaos space marines or anything else. The Space Hulk itself was destructive. It was infested, mayhaps we should use the word possessed, by some form of malicious entity, capable of twisting the minds of humans and causing many of them to die from horror and commit suicide. As the Warder's fleets attempted to stop its ingress into the system, they lost many vessels to this warping influence until eventually, Finally, the Space Hulk was driven off and destroyed above one of the Warder's planets by the lamentous chapter of the Space Marines, suffering almost a full third of their numbers in casualties whilst doing so. There again goes an example though of the more unique elements of space hulks. We've talked about how they can be infested by things like orcs or well, pretty much anything in all due reality. Anything could take up refuge on a space hulk. There are even those who are infested with humans. Those humans whose ships got trapped in the huge mass of the space hulk whilst within the warp and then spent millennia potentially, or at least decades of upon decades of time, trapped in this bubble of real space within the warp, sustaining themselves in any way they can whilst hoping for rescue. In many cases, they will be slowly twisted in a chaotic manner by the warp's influence and occasionally by the Space Hulk's very own influence as well. These creatures are often referred to as Hull Geists mutated abhorrent wretches that were once humans, but now, well, less so. But in other cases, it is not actually the occupants of the Space Hulks that is the problem. It can actually be the Hulk itself. Now, these kinds are fairly rare, the kinds that actually disturb entire planets merely by its presence. Now, a Space Hulk appearing in a system is already quite scary. It's going to freak out a lot of people because they don't know what's on it. And until that has been fully, you know, evaluated and discovered, assuming, of course, that the local planetary governor would be dumb enough to inform the civilian populace of its appearance, <laughs> that'd be a bad idea. Unless you really, really want to put the riot police budget to good use, I do suppose. Um, then it can bring a great deal of distress and terror to the populace, but nine times out of ten, they will never be informed about the approach of a space hulk until it is far, far too late, because the government doesn't want you to know that something is coming to eat your very goddamn soul. And if it turns out to be harmless, then, well, there was no reason to panic. There was no reason for mass uprising in the streets and looting and burning and all of that good shit. But, of course, in the case of the Unhallowed Heart and occasional hulks just like it, it's not a mere human form of panic and terror. It is not a human reaction. It is absolutely an unnatural effect that the Hulk has upon the population, driving them mad, sending them into suicidal rages, or simply just having them assault their neighbors for no perceptible reason. There are also Space Hulks who do not display the same kind of malicious behavior, shall we say, but that nevertheless appears to be guided by some form of intelligence. I, I hesitate to use that word because it has a great deal of connotation attached to it, but nevertheless, Warp Artifact Aleph Omicron 002 would be an example of this, also known as the Mortis Thule. It is one of the largest space hulks in a known existence, consisting of dozens upon dozens, if not hundreds, of wrecks all smashed together. This huge conglomeration of spacecrafts 
have been seen to pop in and out of real space and the warp seemingly randomly, but also often in very opportune and inopportune moments. And even when the servants of the Imperium do everything in their power to prevent it from slipping back into the warp so that they can spend more time raiding its depths for secrets and resources, nevertheless, somehow, the Mortis Thule always manages to slip their grasp and enter the warp once more to re-emerge somewhere else. A great deal of import, a great deal of meaning and weight has been attributed to this space hog, and most of it is deeply, <laughs> deeply classified. You know, the kind of classification that even most inquisitors don't have access to. That kind of super secret. Now, of course, it is entirely possible that we are merely anthropomorphizing a phenomenon that we do not fully understand. Maybe we are attributing meaning to the random, in all due reality, movement of a space hulk and going, well, it appeared here and it appeared there, ergo, using our own limited human understanding of the thing in question. But at the same time, this is the 41st millennium, and simply believing that red trucks go faster actually do make the red trucks go faster if you're an orc, so, you know. There is a very delicate line between fantasy and reality. So there may easily be more than merely the mundane dangers aboard a space hulk. Now, with that, I hope you have a little bit of a better understanding of space hulks in the 41st millennium, why they're dangerous, and why simultaneously they are also so very, very coveted. Because whilst they may be stuffed full of orcs and angry things, they might also be stuffed full of shiny, shiny valuables. Until next time, I've been Arch, thank you all very much for listening, and I hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.